Kia ora guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week I had a job down at one of the local op shops. An op shop in New Zealand is the same as a thrift shop in America or a charity shop in the UK. Basically second hand goods. And every time I go in one of these shops, I have a look in the window, have a look on the shelves, see if there's any old cameras. On this particular occasion, there's three cameras in the shop window. I got talking to the lady who works in there, asked her about the cameras. One of them, I recognise the case, I recognise the name on it. A Voigtlander Vitaret R. Now I've got a Voigtlander Vitaret, but I thought I had a Vitaret B. I've never even shot it, to be honest. So I decided to buy the Vito R, which was $60. Oh, bargain. Turns out that this camera used to be her father's. So he's had it from new. It came all boxed and it came with the receipt, the original purchase receipt and warranty. Lovely condition. So uh, that's for a future episode, that one. While I'm in there buying it, I said, what's the other one there? She's, oh, that's my old camera. That is a Rolli 35 SE. I said, oh yeah, how much is that? $160. She says, they're normally going for about $400 in New Zealand. So I thought, well, that sounds like a bargain. I said, if that's still there next week, when I get paid again, I'll be in for that baby. Anyway, got home that night, couldn't sleep a wink, researching the camera, salivating over the camera, $160 burning another hole in my pocket. Went back the next day, banging on the door, let me in, let me in. I want it, got it, beautiful. So uh, I've had a play with it and I've had a look round it and I'm excited, I'm really, really excited about that camera. Great condition, it comes highly recommended. What I'm definitely not gonna do is give you a grand tour and a ins and outs of the camera. There's a million videos on YouTube with far more qualified, far more, far more coherent and uh, knowledgeable people giving, giving in-depth reviews and uh, that's not me. So what I'll do is I'll just give you a basic overview of what I think are the main features of the camera. I'm meeting up with an old photographer mate down at a local beach. Not sure what the conditions are gonna be like. It's supposed to be wet, we'll see. So I'm gonna make a few photographs. Basically that's it and actually it started spitting, thankfully. We might have some rain. Come on, cool this puppy down. I'm gonna put a roll of Rolleye RPX 400 into the camera. So a Rolleye camera, Rolleye film, let's crack on. <laughs> Exciting times. So welcome to the Rolleye 35 SE. Just look at that. With a big smudge, a big fingerprint on the lens. That's not too flashy, is it, Paul? A little protecting UV filter. First thing that strikes you is the size of this bad boy. Here is my trusted, beloved Fujifilm X100F. See the size difference straight away. Here is my other trusted and beloved Olympus 35 SP. And look at the size of the lens. The lens just incredible. The lens on this little baby is supposed to be absolutely fantastic. It is a Sonar 40 millimeter f 2.8 lens. Now this is quite a quirky design. You've got the lens obviously, you've got the viewfinder there, indication dial that you set just to indicate what sort of film you've got in there, but it doesn't really make any difference. On the top of this little dial, you've got the shutter speeds, which range from bold mode right up to 500th of a second. On this dial, you have the ASA, or ISO selector and at the moment I've set it for 400 because that's the speed film I'm going to put in. On the top of that dial you've also got the f-stops f2.8 to f22. The focus, let me just get that bloody smudge off, doing my head in. Now to focus this camera it's a little bit different. First thing you've got to do is extend the lens. You just pull the lens out like so, turn it until it locks in place and that is now set to take photographs. To focus this, there's no rangefinder in it, it's just a viewfinder. So basically, you've got to guess your focal distance. You've got a distance scale in feet and meters. So if your subject that you're shooting is round about maybe say eight feet away, you put it at eight feet there, or you can switch it straight up to infinity. Theoretically, the majority of what you're shooting should be in focus. I'm gonna try and always shoot this bad boy at maybe F8, F11, to give myself the best chance of a reasonably sharp shot. To collapse the lens, it's a little bit different. You've got to cock the shutter, then you press down on this little black button there, which allows you to turn the lens and then slide it back in. That won't collapse unless you've cocked the shutter. This is your shutter release button. I've just added a little red soft release button just because I had one and it fit. And it looks freaking cool, in my humble opinion. Check out on the base of the camera, you have the film rewind. You've also got a hot shoe, which is on the bottom of the camera, which is Totally quirky design, but hey, whatever. I can't see myself ever using a flash, but it's there if I need it. Then you've got access to the camera via this switch here. You open that up, then you lift the whole back of the camera off. This part here is your film pressure plate. So you open that. When you go to load a film, you load it from the opposite side actually, which is again, different to most cameras. Most cameras you load from this side, pull across to the right. 
you load from the right to the left. But we'll, we'll check that out when we come to a loader film. So we'll just put this back on there for now. Now this camera does need a battery to operate just the light meter. Uh, it hasn't got one at the moment, but to put a new battery in, you slide this little slider across, which pops up the battery compartment. And it's saying here that you need a PX27 battery. I haven't got one, haven't got access to one at the moment, so uh, I'm just gonna shoot this manually. This switch here is your film rewind, so when you come to rewind a film, you just lift that to the R setting. Normally, your film advance lever is on the same side as your shutter button. So you press the shutter, wind on, you release the shutter, and then wind on from the opposite side, which is totally different. But it seems to, in my hand, it seems to work. What I'm gonna do is attempt to load a film in here for the first ever time. I thought I had a roll of Rolli RPX 400, but we haven't. We've got a roll of Rolli Retro 400S. So, heh, that's what we're gonna go with. First time loading in anger. Open the back release. According to form, all we do, oh, this is, this is different, completely different. Seems like it's upside down. So you pop your film in there, pull that across, and it's not gonna travel far, actually. Such a small, compact camera. Oh, this feels so awkward. Try and get your leader into one of these slots on the opposite side, and then you simply wind on. Let's just see if we're gonna get a bit of a take up. Oh, that feels a bit crunchy. That does feel crunchy. Oh, that feels crunchy as, man. It's in the sprockets, but it just feels very crunchy. Okay, let's close the pressure plate at the back. Slide on the back door, and that should be locked in place. What I should have told you is that, is that the film counter is on the base, is on the base plate there. So, we'll just keep winding on until we get a number one showing in there. Okay, but I'm not sure, actually. Yeah. All right, I'm with it, I'm with it. You've got the red indicator adder showing you that the film's winding on, winding on okay. And then you've got a little silver, a little metal pointer there, which presumably will indicate that it's a frame number one. So let's just give it one more advance. See if that settles on number one. It has done. So we are now loaded, possibly stupidly actually, because I don't want to accidentally trip that off. If you actually close the lens, and lock the lens up, that will not fire. So that is it guys, that's the Rolli 35SE, fully loaded with Rolli Retro 400S, black and white film. What a beautiful piece of German engineering I've got in my hands here. Fizzing, cannot wait to shoot this little camera. So thankfully, it's raining, and it's warm rain. It's beautiful, Whew, freshen the place up. Oh, instant! Salt water. Electronics hate it, don't they? Nice work, mate. Decent sunlight, dark sky, moody sky, cannot beat it. Love a bit of storm light. It is looking pretty cool, that last bit of light, isn't it? Gonna have to work fast though, mate. You've got, you've got a log. Let's have a look, Kitty. Let's have a look. 
just got all the filters and everything on it. That's gorgeous. Oh, that is cold. Got my shadow though. I can't get enough. That's incredible. Not a lot else on the beach for you to show. Okay, a week and 36 shots later, we've got a full roll of film. Now, when I said it was crunchy when I was winding on, initially, when I was loading the camera, that has not been an issue whatsoever, it's been fine. So to rewind the film, you switch that little switch there to the up position, where it says R for rewind, I presume. Go to the base of the camera, open up the rewind lever. There should be a little arrow, there is a little arrow there, telling which way to go. Let's go. Just keep winding, all seems to be going well. I hear a little click and it's winding freely. That, my little chickadees, should be done. I think I've put that switch back down to the correct position. Now to open the back of the camera, that little switch there, and then remove the, the whole camera. And out pops the film. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, out pops a film. All right, let's get this thing developed. Let's open that open. Let's see what we have got. Whoo! Oh, man, first impressions, they look pretty damn good. Oh, yes. Let's get these dried, get them scanned, and have a good look at them. But first impressions, very, very nice. Oh, exciting times. All right, airing cupboard. Where's the airing cupboard? A bit bigger than my van this. I don't know my way around.
from a user experience, I can't recommend this camera highly enough. It's an absolute pleasure and a joy to use. Sure, it's quirky, it's a little bit strange, it's small, it's fiddly at times, it's a little bit different, just like myself. But at the end of the day, it's a fun camera to carry around and shoot. Overall, I was very happy with the image quality. A few of the shots are a little bit soft on people's faces, and that's that's just down to myself and my, uh, my bad focusing. That is something that I will rectify in future episodes. Thanks for checking out this video, really appreciate it. It's been quite a hard video to put together. Overall, I'm quite happy with the results. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching.